Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Render Man 23 tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to create some very simple procedural rocks which can be used to great effect with a lot of versatility as you can see here. And hey, make sure you're subscribed with notifications on, otherwise you may be missing out on the many tutorials that we're releasing for free each week here on YouTube. First thing we're going to do is we're just going to add in a cube and we're going to subdivide this using the mesh smooth and we'll just smooth it three times. Next we want to make sure that we have got displacement enabled on it so we will go to the attribute editor and scroll down to render man, select Catmull Clark and we also want to select prevent polygon cracking here and I'm also going to increase the size of this a little bit to 10 on all axes. Uh, next we'll just quickly drop a light in the scene. So to do this we're going to use triplanar projection if you haven't seen our triplanar projection tutorial, make sure you watch that. You may be able to follow along without it, but you will miss out on some extra information that you will help you with this technique. So we're going to open up the Hypershade editor. Mine docks to the right hand side, but yours will probably just float on top. You can drag it into the right hand side if you want to dock it as well. Then we're going to add a Pixar surface shader to our sphere, and we're just going to call it rock. Next, we're going to add a Pixar round cube, which is our triplanar projection. And we're going to leave everything as default except we'll use three textures. Next we want to grab a PXR multi texture. And if I just hit three on the round cube and run the result multi into the manifold multi on the multi texture. And then if I hit three on the keyboard with the multi texture selected and just go from the result RGB out into the diffuse color we will then be pretty much set up. So now we just need to assign some rock textures to it. And you can find these wherever you like. I have created a bunch from taking some photos of some rocks and things around the area. A um, great thing about New Zealand is it's made up of a lot of volcanic rock. So you get some pretty interesting rocks. Um, so I'm just gonna get select three textures and open those up in the first three slots of the multi-texture manifold. So now if we render, just so I can pan around that, I'll do it in the viewport for once. You'll see that our textures are being mapped on there. So that in itself is not very exciting. I'm just gonna add another light on the opposite side. But we have our texture working and that's the main thing. So what we'll be doing mostly here is displacement. We could use a bump map with this, however, if we use a PXR float, PXR to float and select the multi-texture RGB output and plug it into the two float and then we can just create a bump and run the result F into the input bump and the output into the bump uh, normal. So then when we render, you'll get a bit of bump there. And this is really good because it's incredibly quick to render. If you don't need that extra silhouette, you just want the texture then this will work really well with what you're doing. So we'll keep that bump there because it will give us a little bit of extra detail, but we're also going to create a displacement. So we're going to use a PXR displace. Get rid of the new shading group and we'll just plug the out color into the displacement input of our PXR surface shading group. And we'll use the PXR to float and we'll just run this result F into displacement scalar. And then if we render again, we get this exceptionally spiky looking rock. And we'll just fix that by reducing the displacement to say 0.2. And that will give us a nice amount of displacement there, maybe even a little less 0.15. All right, so you can see it's respecting all the cracks. And the if I run the IPR, you can see that this is without the with the with the displacement disabled, and this is with it enabled. If you're looking for a little bit more sharper detail, definitely want to add the displacement in there and then just refine the amount of bump that you want for it um, and obviously without it it's quite blurry but if you're far away from the rock probably won't make a difference. Now I took these photos in log so they're actually fairly desaturated. Uh, depending on the textures that you're using you may want to use an HSL node here. Run the result RGB into your input RGB and that result RGB into the diffuse and that way you can just increase saturation if you want. So you can see that's a little bit more saturated now. 
it may or may not be what you're after it will just depend on exactly what you're trying to do now we can layer in some more interesting effects here by using a couple more nodes the first and probably the most obvious one to do is a pxr dirt and we can use this to assign colors to the cracks in the rock so if we just put this here and then we'll create a pxr blend and we'll open up that rgbr and we'll just run the result rgbr into the top alpha and then the hsl into the bottom rgb and the result rgb into the fuse color um, that top color can be something really obvious like highlighter pink so now you'll see that all the areas that are occluded or the tightly tightly shaded areas are now pink so you can see that we could change that color to be something a little bit more suitable and we might get an interesting result so for the moment i'm just going to quickly disconnect or disable the bump uh, and displacement and we'll just quickly look dev something interesting to put in the cracks so if we use the pixar dirt with a blend and then use a fractal and then multiply those and run that output into the diffuse color temporarily uh, we'll have to have the uh, bump enabled uh, the displacement enabled there for some reason it won't render without it so what i'm looking for is in the areas where there are cracks some nice texture so the fractal we're just going to increase the frequency of it to say 10 maybe even higher make it say 50 and now we'll run the blend of the fractal and the pixar dirt into that top alpha of that initial blend that we created and that rgb out to the diffuse color so now it's just going to give us a little bit more variation in the value of that pink color there and it's just not going to be linearly within those anywhere that's occluded it's going to sort of have some fall off and stuff as well you can make that fractal look even more exciting actually if you turn on turbulent and uh, maybe add some negative erosion and then we'll turn that bump back back on all right it's starting to look cool uh, probably not the color we're after though so we're going to change that to be a sort of greeny something like that would probably be cool all right so we're sort of starting to get like a a mossiness to it and that blends a little bit better with our texture overall obviously compared to the pink now if you're doing something sci-fi you could run that rgb out from the fractal multiplied with the pxr dirt into say your emission uh, which will run to the top there and we'll set it to glow gain and go down to glow and we'll set our color to yellow so hard to tell that it's actually glowing but you can see how that kind of it's illuminating itself so it does kind of create a, a interesting effect but if you've got up more objects in the scene that's obviously going to look kind of cool and interesting um, but we're going for a, a rock here so we'll take that out and then we'll look at our pxr dirt which is our occlusion and we're going to bias the direction so if we just go back to our dirt render here all the all the uh, greeniness is just in any of the occluded areas and we can assign that to be only in areas facing a specific direction by using the bias so we'll set that to say biasing one on the y-axis so that's x y and z so now it will probably be easy to show in this viewport so if we look at it from the top no green if we look at it from the bottom the occluded areas that are facing down are getting the um, green so actually we probably want to set that to negative one because i believe moss is always going to be in areas that are that are moist that are that have accumulated some moisture and in water so that's tendency to be the direction that's facing up now our sphere can be any shape um, preferably made of only quads because it subdivides a lot nicer so we could say stretch this out and then maybe grab those bottom vertexes squash those move them up so now we've got this shape here which will give you this sort of result and finally we could add some specularity to it um, because currently it's got none so why don't we use the pixar dirt into the roughness so we'll just need to convert that to a float run the rgb input to there and then the result f into the specular roughness and then increase the face value 
All right, so I just reduced the saturation of that green a little bit, and with that specularity, you get a little bit more surface detail because it's able to show up the crevices and whatnot. I added that out ground plane in as well, so we could see a little bit more of the global illumination that's happening. And um, and yeah, that is pretty much all there is to it. Um, the better the resolution of your texture maps that you use with your multi texture will ensure that you get a much finer result. Um, so patrons this month, I'll give you so a nice set of rock textures that I've taken photos of, and um, you'll like, you'll be able to use those with this or whatever project you like. That's it for this tutorial. If you found it useful, make sure you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week, just like this one. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord, and more by clicking the link below.